All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this MacBook Pro model A1707 late 2016 model. So first what you want to do is get the pentalobe screwdriver and remove the screws from the bottom. Um, so this is a uh, pentalobe 1.2. So there's four here that are a little bit shorter and then the two in the back are quite a bit longer. So once you do that, turn the computer over and then if you can use your pry tool or fingernail and then you can go from under here if you can't do that you can also use your screwdriver and kind of like pull this but the easiest way is if you have a um, suction cup like this so stick the suction cup on it and then pull it up and then once you get it lifted slightly you can get your fingernail or pry tool underneath and then just go down the side like this and then once you get that pop it out okay so you do that on the other side as well Go all the way around and then go on the side and pop it up. There are usually some clips on the middle too, but usually they'll pop up when, at the same time when you pull those two out. After you do that, you want to pull this cover towards yourself. Um, so keep the hinges backwards and then you pull the cover towards yourself. I like to use my thumb to push the bottom out and then while kind of helping pull the cover with my fingers here and then my hand on this side. So just do that pull on it and it should come out like that and sometimes it's really tough so you might have to keep going back and forth pulling it like this you can also use your finger to kind of pull the top like that um, and that's how you would get this cover out so this had liquid damage so I'm gonna do a full disassembly um, just to show how to take it apart but not really how to kind of clean it up and fix it um, so this rubber piece you'll want to remove okay so usually it's held down by little stickers but I guess the stuff they spilled on it Kind of dissolve the adhesive then you want to flip this little tab up and then disconnect this cable um, I think this is part of the battery connection um, and then you want to make sure to disconnect the battery completely so you have to switch to a t5 screwdriver and remove this big screw here okay once you remove that big screw you'll want to pull up the metal tab that that it was holding down just a little bit don't pull it too far just so it's no longer uh, making contact with the pins below. That's what powers, um, what connects the battery to the rest of the computer. Okay, once you do that, you'll want to remove all these screws on top. Um, so usually after I disconnect the battery, I'll hold the power button down just to drain any power. This had liquid spill damage, so it's probably completely drained already anyways. Um, but yeah, hold the power button just to be safe. All right, about 15 seconds. Once you do that, you'll want to remove all the screws. It switches back and forth between um, T5 and T4, I believe. Um, so most of these covers will have T4. So all of these little covers will have T4. You don't need to remove this one. Um, and then all of these little covers have T4. And then the four screws down here on the board are also T4. The rest um, that I'll be removing that aren't on these covers will be T5. And then these are also T4. Anything that's holding down a metal plate is T4. And then the four down here are T4. The rest will be T5. Okay, so we will first start by removing the T4 screws holding down these um, hinge covers. Oh, did somebody? Oh, it looks like somebody opened this already and lost some screws. So I'll do what I can, but yeah, I don't know what to do about missing screws. I don't have a spare set of all these. All right, so I'll remove that. Remove the other two screws on this side. So we're removing these screws just so we can get access to the screws that are underneath. Um, oh, that's another thing. The screws that are holding down the, um, what do you call these? The heatsink pipe. Um, you have to use, I believe it's a T8. Oops, not T10, T, yeah, T8. All right, so these will be held down with a T8, so it looks like we'll remove this one first, okay, and then this one we have to remove the T4 screws, so we'll remove all the T4 screws, so try and keep all these screws in order because they are like different sizes, different shapes, different lengths. So you don't want to mix them up, and then if you mix them up, it's going to be very difficult to know where they go. So once you take those two screws out, you can lift that metal cover off, and then you can set it aside. 
Um, there are quite a few screws, so just be aware of that. Okay, after you remove that those that cover, you can pry up this connector. Just use your fingernail or a pry tool on the edge, and then you can lift it up. Um, that's for the audio jack. And then underneath here, there's a connector. I believe this is for the um, fingerprint touch ID sensor. Okay, once you do that, um, you can remove the other T8 screw here. All right. After you remove the T8 screw, switch back to the T4 and remove all these connectors. So remove the two screws. All right. Once you remove those two screws, you can um, pop up this connector. This is for the um, the USB-C ports on the side. Um, looks like this might have been damaged by the liquid. Um, and it's the same on this side. There's the two screws, and then you can pop that out. So this doesn't come out. You just leave that in there. Okay. Then we will remove the four T4 screws down here. All right. Just go around the bottom. Just remove those four T4 screws. Okay, and then also remove these two metal plates. So this one's for the trackpad. All right, remove those two screws. All right, you can move this, remove the metal plate, and then you can pry up this connector like that. All right, then you want to remove these two screws and do the same thing. Okay. Forgot what this connector is for. It's probably for like the keyboard and stuff, but we'll kind of get a better look after we pull the board out. All right, let me pop this out. All right, after we remove that, then let's see, then we got to remove the T4 screws here. All right. I just move all the, remove the metal plates first so it's a little bit easier to kind of keep track, put them all in order. All right, then pop this connector out too, just like this. All right, then you got this connector here. I believe this is for the microphone. So you flip up the little black tab here and then use this um, black tape piece to kind of just wiggle and pull the connector out. And then I fold this connector back a little bit just so when I take out the board it won't get caught. All right, then you got the other T4 screws here. Just remove those two. All right, once you remove those two, you can pop up this uh, the USB-C connectors here as well. All right, and then just fold them out of the way. Don't bend them too much. You don't want to damage it. Then you got one screw here holding this metal plate. Take that screw out. Remove this metal plate. All right, then you got this connector here. I believe that's for the touch bar. All right. We'll get a better look once I remove the motherboard. Um, and then the only other T4 uh, screws you want to remove are the four here holding this um, LCD connector in place. Okay, just want to remove that one. Remove this one. All right, once you remove those two, you can take that plate out. And then we'll remove these two. Make sure you don't flip these components upside down or anything. Um, I'm not sure if it serves any important function that if you flip it upside down, it'll cause problems, but it has little pads that kind of hold the wires. So I don't know if flipping it will mess things up. So I always try and put it back exactly the same way I took it out. Okay, so we'll take out those screws. This is a very complex um, disassembly video so if you want to see the bottom of it has this kind of like pad thing and then the top just has this metal piece so 
I don't know if that helps with the screen or at all, so make sure you don't lose it. And then after that, you just pop the screen connector out like that, and you can leave, leave it there. All right, now that we got all of those out, we'll switch to the T5. Um, so to remove the T5 screws, there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's nice and easy to remember, five T5, okay. So just remove all those five screws. Oops. You also have to disconnect the wireless antennas, of course. Two. Okay. Three. So I'll disconnect the wireless antennas because it makes it easier. Just get as close to the tail as you can and then pull it up. Don't try and pry from the front or you can damage it. All right. Now that we got that out, you can access the screw. All right. That screw out. Remove this screw. And remove the last one. Alright, now that we've got all five screws out, the only other things to do is to disconnect the speaker cables. I use my fingernail and then try and get as close to the connector as possible and then kind of pull it and wiggle it and it will pop out just like that. Same thing with this one, get as close to it with my fingernail, pull it up, wiggle it, and it'll pop out just like that, okay? Now that we got all these connectors out, we just gotta lift the board out. So the easiest way um, is to pull here, but be careful because you don't wanna bend this. Um, so if you're kind of worried with that, you can try and get underneath this part of the board. And then while you're lifting this, um, just make sure you keep pushing these connectors aside because they'll get caught on there while you're trying to lift it up, okay? Just keep pushing all the connectors out of the way. They will randomly get caught on there. Oh, you also have to remove, sorry, this adhesive here. So these rubber things, they have an adhesive, so just peel it up. I was wondering why it was still a little bit stuck. All right. Once you peel that all up, you can continue again with lifting the board out and just keep pushing the all these connectors aside. They do get sometimes caught on here, which makes it feel like for some reason something's stuck. But if it's really still a tough to get out, make sure you double check, make sure you, that you got all the screws out, okay? So now you can see the board is out. So here you can see this connector was for the keyboard um, and they kind of like built the fan connectors into the keyboard, they connect to the keyboard. Um, and then this one is for, this looks like for the touchpad or the, um, the whole touch ID, not touch ID, the touch, whatever that thing's called. And yeah, so the touch ID thing or the touch strip with all the touch buttons actually have two connectors that go into it, it looks like, right? And that is for the microphone. Okay, so we got this out. If you want to remove the connector completely, there's two more T4 screws on the bottom and then you can just pop that out. Um, it doesn't have a metal plate. Okay, but that's pretty much all there is to this laptop or MacBook. Um, I believe this is the solid state drive memory. Um, I mean, not like you can do anything with it. If you do, I highly recommend, I mean, if you need help recovering data from a hard drive or MacBook, um, I highly recommend this company called $300datarecovery.com. They're in LA um, and they tend to be like the best price for what they do. So yeah, if you really need data recovery, I would check with them on that. Um, there are other places, but they always tend to charge like way more, so I just bring stuff to them. Um, and then also, if you want, you can remove these metal plates. All these little metal plates, they pop out. Um, you have to use like your fingernail or a pry tool, but it's they're pretty tough to remove. You basically get your fingernails under there, and then you can pry these up. Just follow along. Don't try and pry it all up from one spot, because they'll bend really easily. Um, but yeah, so... I believe all of these can pry up, but if you do this, just be careful. And also be careful that you don't flex the board too much. You don't want to damage the the board trying to get these out. Um, I'm surprised, actually. These are coming out pretty easily. A lot of times they'll be very difficult to remove, but for some reason this time they're coming out very easily. So since I'm going to do a liquid spill cleanup, I'm going to just take these off so I can 
clean underneath. Alright, this one over here. Okay, be careful with this one. Alright, usually when you do this, you'll want to have it like flat on a surface if you're trying to pry it out so you don't accidentally damage anything. But if you know what you're doing, then you kind of do it like this. All right, so there we go, got the last one out. So I'm pretty much gonna clean off this board um, and then we'll see if that helps with anything. Um, they said it was giving a flashing folder, so I'm not think I'm thinking it's not gonna be repairable because that means the SSD is most likely fried, but we will see. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one, bye.